enjoyed every minute of that. So I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the show because we're just about ready to wrap it up for the day. And uh, we're bringing you the big boy right now. It's the uh, big cast member from Battlestar Galactica. This is the large ticket E show ride character, guys. This is him. It's Richard Hatch. Richard Hatch. And uh, Larry is going to be bringing him to you now. Uh, right here from Motor City Con 98. Take it away, Larry. Hey everybody, this is Larry Snowdy from the Motor City Con. I'm standing here with Richard Hatch from Battlestar Galactica. Rich, how's it going today? Well, pretty good. Larry? Is it Larry? Yeah, it's Larry. Yeah, good, Larry. Okay, I had to make sure. <laughs> I had to look back here too, make sure it was him. You know. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about about your work before Battlestar Galactica. I mean, what were you in? What what kind of just got your creative juices flowing there? Well, uh, I guess I'd have to say that uh, for my for me, mm -hmm. all my life I've been an artist. I've been uh, <clears throat> studied classical piano from the time I was eight years old. Uh, studied ballet, believe it or not. I was a pole vaulter, high jumper, trapeze. Uh, did a double on the trapeze. Walked high wire. Did a headstand on the high wire. I'm a juggler. I uh, love circus. Uh, let's see what else. I used to read science fiction from the time I was a little kid. And whoever this guy is, choke him out, would you please? Where's the hook? I um, so I've been I've been doing anything and everything actually as a as an artist from the time I was a kid. And I started writing articles for publications, and then I got into acting and uh, studied for about three or four years. Did some commercials and uh, ended up going to New York with an acting company. And we started doing one-act plays, poetry readings, Shakespeare in a little teeny theater in Hell's Kitchen wow. around uh, 50... 54th Street between 8th and 9th in New York. Well, I thought the guy saw you say you're 54. I'm like, oh my God. Well, I'm actually 53. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's thank you. Enough. How old are you? Well, I'm only 26, man. You're 26? Yeah, I'm 26. God, you look so old. Old? No. Yeah. <laughs> Just okay, so do you, Rich. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Actually, you know something? I tried my whole life to look mature, and, and you already have that maturity about you. It's one of those commanding kind of presence that, that makes people bow down and do your bidding. And I'm, again, pay me lots of money. Would you? Yeah, lots here, more here, money. Here, okay, here. okay. Do you have yeah. another 20 in there? Yeah, here you go. Okay, another 20. Now, see, here, Sophie, another Sophie, 20, Sophie, quick. Stuff, <laughs> but no, now, so, how, how did you land the role on Battlestar Galactica, actually? Well, I went to New York in uh, 77, 1970. I did all my children mm -hmm. uh, for three years, um, playing the role of Philip Brent. Did a couple of plays, musicals, and then I went back to L.A., replaced Michael Douglas on Streets in 1976. And then, after the fifth and final year of that series, I got... Uh, they asked me to audition for Battlestar, and I turned it down because I love Star Wars and I thought it was going to be a rip-off of Star Wars, and I didn't want to go in with thousands of other actors just trying to be another Han Solo. Right. So, as it always is, when you turn something down, they want you more. So they went through every actor in Hollywood looking for perfection, couldn't find it. So they finally decided to look for imperfection, and they found me. And so then, there you are. I was the last guy that they hadn't seen who had not come in to read for the part. So uh, they saw me on a class of 65, Glenn Larson, and he arrived at my house in a limousine, taking me out to dinner to some French restaurant, got me absolutely bombed, and then told me about the show and begged me to do it. And I said, well, I don't know, Glenn, please, please, won't you do Battlestar? We need you. You're the only person that can play that role. And I said, well, Glenn, how much money you got? And Glenn brought out his wallet and he started, you know, placing 20 bills on the, on, just like you did on the That's table. Right, yeah, just like and you I, said, I said, I said, 20 ain't going to do it, Glenn. I said, I said, <laughs> I need a lot more zeros, okay? Throw a lot more zeros in there and we'll talk. Including so, the decimal point or without actually, the decimal point? Actually, <laughs> Actually, agents agents do all the negotiation, but it was funny because I, honestly, I, I was a very serious actor all my life, and I was a big science fiction person, but I didn't think a show like this was going to really allow me to do a lot of acting. So, to tell you the truth, in the beginning, I wasn't too excited to do it, and I actually told my agents, I said, look, I said, you know, I'm not sure I want to do this, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, you know, and do whatever you need to do to negotiate. I said, if it's not really meant to be mine, then fine. It's okay. I'm willing to let it go. Now, that seems like a very cavalier attitude. Looking back, I can't believe I did that. 
you know, I mean, really, I, I, I don't know what I was thinking because it was a great experience, it was a great show, a great cast, I'm glad I did it, but back then, I really just had had no concept of what it was all about, and I guess probably not being so desperate to have it made it easier for me to get it, which is a lesson in life, by the way. The harder you push, the more you try, sometimes the more people say, sorry, next. So I think for me it was a big lesson in just learning how to let go and, and trust a little bit and know that uh, what comes to you is supposed to come to you. Okay, now as you know that we're coming up upon the 20th anniversary of Battlestar Galactica. Right. How does it feel to know that something that you were in is so loved? I mean, if people enjoyed it so much that they come to the can, you, can you go back and say that again? That, that, that was so loved. 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 Say that loved. Again. loved. 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 Okay. Especially you. <laughs> Especially you. No, no, that's not How true. Feel? I, you know something? I, everybody had their favorite character. Some people love Boomer. Some people love Starbucks. Some people like Apollo. Some people like Sheba. I think the nice thing about the show is it was a family show, and there was something for everybody in it, and uh, the, the the terrific part about it was is that we had a lot of people coming together under difficult circumstances and creating something that had such high expectations and such pressure that it's amazing we were able to accomplish anything and we had a network or networks that did not support science fiction at that time and I think that this show even though it was inspired by Star Wars, had a, a very original theme, an original story, it was probably closer to uh, Gene Roddenberry's original concept of a wagon train in space. And I think that we accomplished more in one season than most shows have ever accomplished because to have the impact that this show had 20 years later, mm -hmm. with people still coming to you know, see the stars in the show, to read the books, the new book that just came out updating the original show, Armageddon, and I think uh, the marketing power of the products and games and toys most shows after one year disappear Battlestar never did so I've been going to Universal for the past three years telling them that you know to have this much attention to a show that's 20 years old that only had one season is amazing I said this show has something wonderful it never got developed one year is not enough time to really work out all the flaws next generation if everybody watched the show know that in the first year it had a lot of problems and Star Trek same I mean doesn't matter what it is most shows have a lot of problems Babylon 5 so Battlestar had one year and um, we're the only series to have placed in the top 20 on network television in the first year the highest rated network science fiction show of all time um, also it made money it was not a failure it made money for ABC Universal for everybody so the problem was ABC was not getting all the revenue they decided to cancel it made a big mistake tried to bring it back it was too late they cut the budget the actress didn't want to do the show because it was not the original concept right. so I think had they brought back the original series with the original concept original everything they would have been very successful I agree with you on that one now you were just said you just mentioned about the book right now, this is actually a book that you wrote and right how, how, how did that come about I mean what made you decide to write a book about Metal Star Galactica well number one I've been writing for years I wrote the uh, extreme comics right here there you are that was uh, it was Apollo's journey one two and three which Rob Liefeld uh, from extreme press came and asked me to write I'd written a trilogy of stories to do a new Battlestar Galactica series in 19 God 1985 so they knew I was writing and then uh, Byron Price licensed the right to do the books they heard I was writing and they asked me if I would come up with a story and develop it and they put me with uh, an incredible writer named Christopher Golden and together the two of us put the book together and uh, I was really 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 pleased with how it came out okay I just have it a sold out in three weeks believe it three or not weeks? three weeks they did a second printing and then the second book got picked up and that is Warhawk that comes out in uh, September of 1998 okay and uh, and then we're working on a series right now the, the, a we're, ne series. we're negotiating and with a number of companies right now to put together a new syndicated series now what can we do to help to help, help that go through to show that there is an interest get your wallet back out again uh, well not beside that <laughs> but beside, I mean, <laughs> who do we write to can we write somewhere <laughs> um, you should check my webpage at www.richardhatch.com uh, I'm connected to every Battlestar Galactica webpage. We have an international fan club, and uh, we're writing Barry Diller, 
uh, I can't think of the company. You can write Universal, QVC, Barry Diller. Write us and we will put you on a list and then we will submit it to the proper people so that they can see that there's still an incredible fan base out there for Battlestar. All right, that's great. I really appreciate your time, Mr. Hatch. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You've been a heck of an interview. Okay, do you do tricks? Do you like roll over, play dead, you know, sit up? Do you do all those kinds of things? Well, that's more like a personal... If I, if I like, feed you, would you, like... Okay, can you go... <laughs> my God! That's I had to do this for the interview. You don't understand. Every artist has to humiliate himself. Okay. If you want to succeed, you have to be willing to fail. So I was just kind of testing you. Yeah. Well, thank okay. you. Okay. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. You've been great. All right. Appreciate it. There you go. I'm Larry Stoney, Motor City Con. Peace.